you glad to be in God's house? Well, come on, let's stand together and just turn around and shake someone's hand, hug their neck, say, I'm so glad you've come to worship the Lord in this house tonight. Come on now. This is one of our favorites that we sing on Wednesday night. Bye. 
bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would Presence. 
Sing hallelujah, 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 King of glory, build this place, just want to be with you. this evening. We are so glad that you are here. Many I see have, who have been with us and uh, have been supporting our last few times together as we are in a new uh, period of study, new series. We're glad to see many of you back and others. Uh, it's just a delight to have you. We welcome all of those who are joining us online tonight. And if the ushers will prepare to receive the offering from you this evening, we'll go ahead and have prayer for that. We'll pray for our time together here as we study tonight. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we have the privilege again to be in your house. Gather together, Lord, with our brothers and sisters in fellowship where we are worshiping you. Every activity that we do here, Lord, is offered in worship. And Lord, during this time of giving, we truly worship, so thankful that you have provided for us. Bless the offering tonight, each one who gives. Bless our time of study. Anoint our minds. Lord, quicken our, our minds, our thoughts, our bodies. Many are weary from the week's work schedule and from other situations of life that take its, takes its toll. So uh, give us strength tonight, Lord. Let revelation come forth. That brings a transition. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. As our usher comes by, if you will turn your Bibles, please, to the book of Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians, chapter 10. I am going to be reading from the New American Standard Version of Scripture. You can read out of whatever version you may have, or you might just want to follow along. That more than likely will have it on the screen this evening. So far, we have been talking about about the mind, and if I just may, may say this about all the preaching you're going to hear and about all the teaching you're going to receive in this time on God's program, especially for us in this nation, is going to be about the mind because it is the key for our understanding. I have talked about the battle for the mind, talked about having that renewed mindset. And so tonight, to finish out this, this last portion of the introduction to this series in which we're going to be moving in to minister to you about the church concerning the church and the last days in which we're living in and where we are, I feel, and a number of others feel on God's program, and then we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit, the enabler to accomplish what God wants accomplished in this day in which we're living and in the next few years should God tarry that long. 
first of all, let, let me say this, that you can't separate the Old Testament from the New and say you have the Bible. It, it takes both. And in the Old Testament, you, you always find, and especially as we're, it moves into the, the coming of Christ, which is introductory to his coming, and then the New Testament is, is anticipating and looking to his second coming. Uh, you're going to find that there was always a number of, of transitions and changes, not only in the physical realm, but in the spiritual realm, when new governmental leadership came into office, it always affected then the way, the thinking, the activities of God's people. For that, we, in the New Testament, we call those people his church, his kingdom and his church. And there's a difference in the kingdom and the church. What we must do is we must understand and we must look deeper than we've ever looked into the scriptures to get a true understanding of what takes place when there is a shift and a change in those structures. Now, there's a, there's a change today, I believe, with all of my heart. I introduced it. Uh, I said more about it last week and the week before. But I'll, I'll, I'll say something about that again tonight. We are in a transition time in the church. And the problem today uh, of, of the uh, lesser manifestation of the kingdom of God is not because of God, it is because of the church. Now, every time I begin to deal with a church in some sense of negativity, and, and that's not to be mean or to browbeat, it's to enlighten, it's to bring revelation. But every time I and others who seem to get on a church, I always get kicked back there. I always get a little resistance there. And, and, and it's that almost as, as though people are saying, well, what's wrong with the church? We're, we're, we're doing this and we're doing that. And well, there's a lot of things that we're not doing because we haven't, we don't have the, the leadership of the Holy Spirit's freedom to give us that mindset. And when some of it is being preached today, it's being resisted. It's being resisted. So, so listen carefully and, and help me tonight. You're going to hear a lot of, of, of what I feel God is dealing with me, whether that depends on whether you stay with me or whether you go away. So I hope you stay with me. But tonight I want to talk about in this last installment of the mind. We'll talk about the mind in another direction beginning next week, talking about uh, new wine and uh, new wineskins and old wineskins. We'll begin to introduce some new things there or some things that I feel are, are uh, a little bit more advanced as we are looking at the church and, and the kingdom and the Holy Spirit's work in this last day and revival. Second Corinthians chapter two, beginning at verse one, one through six. Now I, Paul, myself urge you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. I who am meek when face to face with you, but bold toward you when absent. I ask that when I am present, I need not be bold with the confidence with which I propose to be courageous against some. Who regard us as if we walked according to the flesh. Paul's getting resistance. Some are accusing him of being tough when he's away from them and, and backing away and a little bit frightened of them when he comes. And he's saying, uh, you got me all wrong. And so he goes into something that, that gets into what I feel is one of the areas in the church today and especially in its congregants that's going to have to be dealt with before we can go much further. So he says, for though, he said, who regard us as if we walked according to the flesh. Now he said, for though we walk in the flesh, and I went in with you into that last week, we, I walk in the flesh, 
we do not war according to the flesh. And he says, we, we are in a war. This is, this is a war. And folks, I want you to know the church is going to be in a real war in a greater capacity in the days ahead. The spirit of the Antichrist is revving up. And it's going to continue to rev up until we see or the world sees the, the, the reality, the, the flesh manifestation of this spiritual that is in housed in one body. One man. So he, he says, well, my scripture jumped here on me. I hit it with my hand. Well, well, well. Now we're back in it. That's the only problem with using this equipment with the book and the pages. You just, you're right there. You can flip a few pages, but this you've got to kick out and start all over again. He said, for though we walk in the flesh... We do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh or carnal, King James, but divinely powerful for the destruction or the pulling down of fortresses, or King James says, strongholds. We are destroying speculations, and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive. Listen to that closely. We're taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, and we are ready to punish all or deal with all disobedience whenever your obedience is complete. Now, as I begin the last of these introductory lessons, in the study on the kingdom mind, I certainly hope and pray that I do not offend anyone here or across the country or cause any undue sadness by using my analogy here. But it's one that it, it just stands out to me. One of the worst diseases and most debilitating physical problems in the world today is the disease of Alzheimer's. One reason Alzheimer's is so terrible is that it tends to have a, a dehumanizing effect on its victims. Because when the mind goes, virtually everything of the body follows suit. So listen closely. Please receive this illustration in the spirit in which it is meant. I do not mean to offend. But I believe a great many believers are suffering from spiritual Alzheimer's. This terrible spiritual malady. Man, in my estimation, and this is me preaching, this terrible spiritual malady manifests itself in a deterioration of a proper application of the mind of Christ. What I would call a kingdom mind or mindset. Too many do not have a kingdom mind or mindset, and that's why the Bible says that constantly, it, it, it just repeats it over and over again. We are to renew our minds day by day, daily. Daily, this kingdom mind that should be operating in every believer's life today, the result of this spiritual malady is a life that is no longer under the full control of Christ. There's, there's too many today that are teetering on the edge of wanting to be in the Lord's camp, but can't get away from the world's camp. So they think that, that they're going to be all right to teeter in the middle. 
But no, something's going to take place sooner or later that's going to bring you to a point where you're going to have to decide, do I seek and want the mind of Christ or do I let it all go and just serve the world and make my bed in hell? I know this is strong language and strong preaching. But a a Christian who suffers in this manner loses the ability to apply a spiritual mind to his or her daily life. He or she forgets how to think in terms of a kingdom agenda and develops a worldly mind. And when someone has a worldly mind, they will do things and develop things pertaining to the world and will soon be gripped by worldly habits. So it is vital, not important, it's vital, it's a must. We don't have a choice, it's a must. It's vital that we talk about the mind in relation to God's kingdom agenda. Because if we can get our minds working properly, then our souls, which is your your mind, will, and emotions that's housed in a body. We are a spirit with a soul and we live in a body. If we get our minds working properly, our souls and bodies will follow. But until our mind is renewed in Christ, then what happens is our soul, our spirit dwindles, It does not grow and our soul leans to the flesh and becomes more obedient to the flesh than it does to the spirit. Our our greatest problem today is not only what we do. It is the way in which we think and the doing then follows. It's our thinking. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, As a person thinks within his self, in his heart, heart, your your, your mind, your soul, that it's all involved there. As a person thinks in himself, so is he or so will that person be. That person will become what they think. The mind is the key to our entire being, which is why the great challenge for us today is to develop a way of thinking that is in concert with the kingdom of which we have become a part. The nature of the battle. Going back to our text passage, the Apostle Paul makes a critical, important statement about the issue or this issue of receiving the word and then what can block it. Why it cannot grow. I told you last week, when we come and we are saved, we are in, we have an implanted word in, in there that, that is there, that seed that is to grow and to be nourished and fed by the word and the spirit and, 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 and by worship and, and, uh, by fellowship and all of these things in, in that mindset of the kingdom. So there's, there's things that can block the word. And, and what can block it? Let's see what he mentions. He said, the weapons of our warfare. It is a war. It is a daily struggle. It is a daily battle. The enemy doesn't die out from you. He doesn't go somewhere else and leave you alone after you come to Christ. He battles right back against you. He comes right back not with anything new, with the same old things that gripped your mind and that was attached to your body that you did before you came to Christ. The weapons of our warfare are not flesh, but they are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses or strongholds. Pulling them down. You cannot will yourself to get away from from a stronghold that the devil has on you. You can't say, I'm going to make a, a New Year's revolution. 
uh, resolution. And I'm going to walk away from this. It is generally thought that on the 17th of January, most everyone who has made a New Year's resolution has turned it loose by the 17th. All the dieters are sitting there with a piece of pie saying, it's not worth it. I'm, I'm just... <laughs> you cannot will yourself. You cannot in your own mind change. The only way strongholds can be pulled down is through the divine power of the Holy Spirit of God. The word fortresses or strongholds here is key to the, to understanding and, and winning the battle of the mind. It's the whole thing. We will never, ever be successful in allowing the seed of God's word to expand and the Holy Spirit to do what does it do? The Holy Spirit enables the mind to be reprogrammed. It enables to separate the mind from the flesh. This doesn't change when you get saved. You still look the same. You still act the same if you're not careful because this thing has been doing its thing and controlling your body. And your mind has has thought upon it so long that your brain has set up all of these activities and you're doing exactly what feels good in this body. But it changes when you come to Christ. (laughs) Until the enemy's fortresses, strongholds are torn down. So the King James calls them strongholds. Fortresses or strongholds. What are they, Pastor? To the best of my ability. Fortresses and strongholds are built to be impregnable. To to, to withstand anything. They're built there. They're, they're not going to give way easy. They're, they're strong. They're, they're fortified. They're, <laughs> flesh can't do it very easily. They are generally built fortresses of, of nations and armies and such are usually built on high ground which would be difficult to to ascend or climb. That's why they're there. They would be very intimidating to one's enemies standing on the outside looking up just wondering how in the world will we break this massive structure down. Now transfer this image to the realm of the mind and you get the idea. What is that stronghold? It's something that is, has been allowed to be built. Do you remember the story of Jericho? Do you remember the, the uh, new battle plan that they were going to use coming across to this fortified city that was wide enough and thick enough in its walls that chariots could literally go around the top of it. And they looked at it, and and in essence, don't you know that they're saying, how in the world will our weapons, will what we have, how can we build ladders big enough, and what can we do to tear that down and break through that? But that's why God said, Here's a new plan for it. Here's a new battle plan. You're not going in on your own. You're going to be obedient to me. But listen to what I'm telling you. Put this in your mind. You're going to walk around this thing once a day for, what, six days, seventh day, seven times. Then you give a shout. And when you do, that wall is going to fall flat. See, we can't tear down the strongholds. 
It has to be our reliance upon God and saying, Lord, I will name this stronghold. We don't want to do that. Lord, I'm bound by this. I'm bound by this habit. I can't get free from this. It's got my mind. It's got my body. God, I, I can't, I can't break it. I've got to have your help. But the moment you do that, God's got a battle plan that will fall that fortress. God says these strongholds have to come down. They have to come down. Before you can go further, they have to come down. I'm telling you, there's not only strongholds in the mind of people today. There's a strongholds, some strongholds in the church body. Some understandings and some things that are going to have to be torn down, pulled down before God can take us into territory we've never seen before. So we understand here that God, listen, God did not build that fortress in your mind. You, you allowed it to be built. A stronghold or fortress is a negative, destructive pattern of thinking that we have developed either through repetition or some experience or some circumstances that have befallen us in our life. As an old saying goes, so a thought, reap an act. So an act, reap a habit. So a habit, reap a character. So a character, reap your destiny. Once a stronghold is built, it then gives the enemy a place from which to launch further attacks against your mind thus creating a fortress from which to repel your further attempts to dislodge him. One reason strongholds are so powerful, folks, is that they are entrenched. There's some thoughts in the church today that's entrenched that if we don't seek God, and we're in an hour in this nation in which the church manifesting the kingdom that is more powerful than the governmental structures, if we don't do that, we're in trouble. If the church doesn't consider today, I might as well say it, it's in my heart. If we don't look at who we support in leadership, if we don't stop looking at Parties, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, Liberals, whatever, Libertarians. If we don't start looking at platforms and start supporting a platform that supports the Word of God. God help me. My friend, if you vote in a way that says it's all right to kill a baby in its last day of life and even let it sit out on a table until it dies and unless if the family is not happy with that child, that's where we're at. And if you vote to support that, you're going to answer to God. You're going to answer to God. Oh, pastor, we're not supposed to be involved in in politics, fooey. Fooey. We need more Christians in politics. But the church needs to stand up and be the church in this last day and lift the word of God and say, I'm going to vote for that word of God. I'm standing for the word. Abortion is wrong. Homosexuality is wrong. Satan builds a stronghold when he convinces a person that his situation is hopeless. I used to hear this all the time as a pastor. For example, if that 
he or she was a drug addict or an alcoholic by nature, will never be anything else. They're convinced of that. Or someone that is, is, that fear controls, and that person feels it can't be conquered. Listen to me, friend. All the lies of the devil, all of these are lies of the devil. But once a person starts believing lies like these, it's pretty much all over because we will always act in accord with who we believe we are. I can tell when people are being oppressed by a stronghold. I heard these things over and over. They say things like, I just can't help myself. It's not my fault. This is the way God made me. I was born this way. I'm just a victim. When we begin to view something as unchangeable, that God says is changeable, the enemy has successfully built a stronghold in our minds. It doesn't have to be anything as dramatic as a drug addiction or alcoholism. It can even be the strongholds of hopelessness, depression, jealousy, lust, or anger. What needs to be done with these strongholds? The only solution. The only solution. There's not another solution. They have to be torn down. They have to be brought down. How then do we do this? Paul gives the answer, I think, in the second half of 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. He says, taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Paul also said in Colossians 3, 1 and 2, he said, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above. How do I do that? You do that by, by reading the Word of God. You do that by, by praying. You do that by understanding that there's, there's more than salvation, that we must live a sanctified life, and we must be filled with the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Keep seeking these things are above. Stop going to places you used to go. Stop being with people you used to be. Stop going in here, going there, or listening to this, or seeing that, or watching this, or watching that. Start getting with people who believe in the word and fellowship and worship God in your spirit. And your spirit will begin to make that separation from your mind and your body. That mind begins to be more over here supporting the spirit of God in your body. Things above where Christ is. What is he doing there? He's seated at the right hand of God, making intercession. Set your mind on things above, not on things that are on the earth. Where we set our mind is so important, and I've got to hurry, because what we set our mind on will come to penetrate and dominate our thinking. I personally, in my 72 years of life and almost 50 years of ministry, have never heard more preaching and teaching on the kingdom mindset we're hearing today and then what we're going to hear, God is trying to do something. He's trying to tell us something, and he wants obedience. Therefore, I say to you again, a new day and a new dimension of power and glory is not on the way. It's here. It's here. But we have to pay a price for it. If you belong to Christ, you may feel like the enemy's always out there trying to chase you down. But when you set your mind on the things of Christ, you can receive God's word and then start acting in light of that word and speaking what that word says to you and about you. And not only will your fears and doubts leave when you come to trust in and stand on God's promises and his word, but God will destroy. Destroy those old fortresses. And what he does, does he leave it vacant, pastor? No. He replaces them with new strongholds, strongholds of truth in your mind. And he will guard these strongholds 
himself. How do you know? Well, Philippians 4 and 7 gives us this promise. The peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension or understanding, will guard, and the word guard there in the Greek is garrison. It's like a sentry of soldiers, a sentry that guards. When I was in the military, I had to pull guard duty various occasions till I got into a regular unit. But those, those sentries walk with, with a weapon, and they have a territory. And that territory is given to them. And if they dare leave that territory, they're in trouble. You guarded what was there. Several occasions, I had to guard a weapons depot and when I was stationed in California. And it was kind of out in the desert area, scariest place I've ever been. Nobody out there around. Every time I went to, to a corner to change in that building, I had always feel like stopping and going, peeking around. Instead of just walking around and going to it. We have to be confident. God said the peace of God will surpass all comprehension. All your understanding. And he will garrison your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Always those ministering spirits, angels guarding. I close with this this evening. If your mind is not set on Christ, then you are not treating him as though he is your life. God called David a man after his own heart because David couldn't get God off of his mind. It was on his mind. In the Psalms, David said that God was the first thing on his mind when he woke up. He was on his mind all day long. He was on his mind when he went to bed and even during the the night when everybody else was asleep, David said, I would wake up with thoughts of God on my mind. That's garrison. That's garrisoning. Such passion, such passion makes a difference in the way we live, how we think, how our mindset is. When Jesus Christ dominates your mind. Your hands don't... Listen to me. It doesn't say your hands won't want to do. It says, but your hands don't have to do what they used to do. When Jesus dominates your, your minds, your feet don't have to go where they used to go. Your eyes don't have to see what they used to see. Your ears don't have to hear what they used to hear. You have control through the Spirit. A kingdom mind is a mind firmly fixed on Jesus Christ and the unchanging Word of God. I pray First of all, let me say it this way. I do not apologize for my ministry, for the message, for it comes from God. And if that message is ever impeded by anyone, then I would have to seek somewhere to share it where it would be received. But I tell you this. We're talking about eternity here, folks. And we're in the very last act. Some people are talking about 100 years from now and, and, and why even 1,000 years from now. And Well, there will be time, but it's, it's not going to be what we have now. It's the second coming of Christ is very, very near according to all the prophetic events. All we're lacking right now is the rapture. The rapture. And let me tell you something. If the rapture took place tomorrow and you didn't go in it, at that moment we'll begin a seven-year period. First three and a half years might not be too awfully bad, but it 
it's going to it's going to start getting rough right off the start because the restraining power of the Holy Spirit is going to be taken out of the way. And God's reserved His wrath for those who wouldn't accept Him. He's been long suffering. He's loving. He's kind, and He keeps saying to us and telling us what we need to do. But the wrath of God's going to be poured out in. And you're going to see, like you've never seen before, a world that has no no control whatsoever except in a man that literally is the full realization of the devil incarnate. I want to go in the rapture. Or should God call for me by the way of the grave? I don't want any stronghold in my life but the strongholds of his word and his spirit and his love. And I love you so much that I share that with you. Not to offend, but I'll be held accountable someday if I do not do what God puts in my heart. I love you. Would you stand with me, please? I'd like for us to pray where we're standing tonight. Or you may want to, if you can't stand and you must sit, that's fine. It's not in the position, it's a condition. If you want to come to the altar, that's fine. We never, ever uh, have a negative thought about the altar. That's always a positive and it's open. And you can pray anytime. There's some who would come and pray with you as well. But let's pray tonight. Let's let's get this in our heart. Yes, Brother Roy, come ahead, and some of the others that might like to join. Let's get this in our heart tonight. Let it sink in. Let it let it become revelation to you, not not just hearing, but in the heart. Let us let us make sure if we're battling, if we're battling, if we're battling strongholds that have been built. God loves you so much; He wants you free. So let Him help you. Ask him tonight to help you. Ask him tonight to give you the help needed, the understanding needed, the wisdom needed to be an overcomer and a victor. You pray in any way you want to, silent, aloud, kneeling, standing, laying down, or walking. I don't care. But let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, my heart is... is a little lighter because of being able to to empty myself of the anointing that I have felt. But yet my heart still lays heavy because I know there's, there's people in this congregation tonight who are dealing with strongholds, are dealing with strongholds. The enemy attacks in every way he can. He has a plot against every single individual. But God, you have a plan, not a plot, a plan. And that plan will be carried out to its completeness if we will trust you and be obedient. There's not a thing the devil can do that can stop your plan from being fulfilled in our lives. When you allowed us to be born into this world through our mother's womb, we came out with a destiny. There would come a point when we would know the difference between right and wrong and and we would make a decision to accept you or reject you. And Lord, when we make that decision, then you place within us, Lord, that spirit man becomes brand new, reborn, and, and our mind is swept, Lord, and we're filled with that mind of Christ at that moment, but the enemy immediately jumps in trying to take that mind back to the old mindset. But we have to stand with the word and trust you and seek you and let you move and work in our lives. I plead the blood of Jesus over every individual in here tonight and whom I love so well. I plead the blood against every spirit dispatched from hell to try to disrupt these lives with his plot. God, I ask you to build fences around these tonight and let your Holy Spirit work as these strongholds are pulled down and replaced by the stronghold of your word, your spirit, and your love, your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Amen. Jesus died for our sins. He tells us all we have to do is believe. Believing is the will of God for us. And when we believe, it brings brand new life because the Holy Spirit comes where there's faith. The opposite of faith is unbelief. The Lord is nowhere in that. Because you're still here, you're still watching today, I know you're ready. So make a decision. It is a choice. That's the part of us that's created in God's image. Our will, our ability to choose life. Because you've chosen life, here's the way it happens. We stop, we repent, we cry out to God and pray, forgive me. Wash me in your blood. Change me from this day forward. I'll never be the same. Now help me fulfill your plan for my life. Hallelujah. Because you prayed that prayer today, you're born again. It's my great privilege to welcome you into the family. I have an ebook that I want to send to you. You'll see the uh, email address right at the bottom of the screen. Contact us. You'll see my cell phone number on the bottom of the screen. Send me a text message. Call me. I want to walk with you in your beginning steps of following Jesus. We're so thankful that you decided to pray. Now let us know. I've had so many people in the last few weeks and months to let me know, Pastor, I prayed with you at the end of the service. We want to help you take the next steps. Water baptism is in your future. We want to help you with that. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you soon.